Everyone, glad to have you with us. It is time for morning prayer here at St. Peter's. We're honored to have you in our midst and to welcome you home to St. Peter's. We are observing the feast and the commemoration of St. Ammonius of the Nitrian Desert, which of course now you're seeing St. Ammon of Nitriota. Same person, slightly different spellings. And it also goes to the fact that he was an Egyptian who was probably Hellenic in his education and, ra and raising, and also in a Latinate world. So Amon is an Egyptian name. Ammonius is the Romanized version of that. And then just pick a space on that spectrum and you can fall into the Hellenic uh, understanding of that. In the second and third centuries of Christianity, particularly in North Africa, and in the areas uh, of the Nitrian Desert outside of, I believe that's to the west of the Nile, south of Alexandria, uh, a community of hermits grew up. These were ascetics who committed themselves to a life of chastity and poverty and eventually community. Uh, think of St. Athanasius and others, um, St. Anthony of the Desert, uh, the mothers, the desert mothers and fathers. So this, these folks coalesced around a, a rather peculiar and particular lifestyle of going out into places of privation and seeking God and the holy. You can really see that in this illustration with his, uh, as, as our seminarian Ava said before we came on, it isn't exactly a photogenic lifestyle. So uh, you see the rather zombified version, um, the sunken eyes, the hollow cheeks, um, the uh, the paroxystic uh, posture of prayer. But he is remembered particularly for his leadership, for his piety, and for his care. He's mentioned in St. Athanasius's uh, biography of St. Anthony and was known for his ability uh, amidst people who went out into the desert to live alone to form a community. Laura, you want to throw anything to that? I know you're probably on Wikipedia this morning checking things out. Actually, Wikipedia didn't offer much, but Forward Movement uh, had a really nice write-up. And, you know, so many, so many bits, we could sit here all day and talk about them. Uh, he was quite clear in his call from God to be an aesthetic, a spiritual guide, um, and, as, and, you know, aesthetic, spiritual guide. Uh, the people in the community loved him so much, they wanted to ordain him and went to a, a local bishop who said, sure, um, he St. Ammonius knew, or Ammonius knew, that was not his call and refused um, by cutting off his ear, because Leviticus says you you must be whole, and the bishop said, don't matter to me. Um, but he was, he was, uh, he, he resisted to, uh, he resisted the call to ordination, because he knew he was called to this uh, aesthetic lifestyle. Um, and he was friends with John Christostom. So, the old, the old golden tongue himself. So yes, I could go on, but I won't. That's all right. So th th this is really kind of, you know, in many ways, there are different Woodstock moments in the early church. This is one of them, um, not to liken someone cutting off their ear to a Woodstock moment, but the aspect of his grace and his focus on his call and the ability of all of these different powerful figures who we remember to this day and often quote. In fact, we quote John Chrysostom every time we pray the daily office with a uh, prayer attributed to him. Just understand how deep and profound these roots go in our tradition. So for all those who choose the ascetic lifestyle, we give thanks. And for those particularly like St. Ammonius or Amon, depending on how you are choosing to spell and say his name, we give thanks as well. All right, it's time for morning prayer. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give us that thumbs up, follow us on Facebook, do all the things that we can support you and welcome you home to St. Peter's as well. If you have any intercessions or thanksgivings, do not hesitate to place them in the uh, remarks on YouTube or in the comments on Facebook. We monitor them and lift them up regularly in prayer. Here we go. It's time for morning prayer. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who is a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives, 
We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in Psalm 72. I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayers be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all day long. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains. May its fruit be like Lebanon, and may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him. May they pronounce him happy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, son of Jesse, are ended. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Now before this, the prophet Eliashub, who was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God, and who was related to Tobiah, prepared for Tobiah a large room where they had previously put the grain offering, the frankincense, the vessels, and the tithes of grain, wine, and oil, which were given by commandment to the Levites, singers, and gatekeepers, and the, contrib and the contributions for the priests. While this was taking place, I was not in Jerusalem. From the 32nd year 
of King Artaxerxes of Babylon, I went to the king. After some time, I asked leave of the king and returned to Jerusalem. I then discovered the wrong that Eliashib had done on behalf of Tobiah, preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And I was very angry, and I threw all the household furniture of Tobiah out of the room. Then I gave orders, and they cleaned the chambers, and I brought back the vessels of the house of God with the grain offering and the frankincense. I also found out that the portions of the Levites had not been given to them, so that the Levites and the singers who had conducted the service had gone back to their fields. So I remonstrated with the officials and said, why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their stations. Then all Judah brought the tithe of the grain, wine, and oil into the storehouses. And I appointed as treasurers over the storehouses the priest Shelemiah, the scribe Zadok, and Padiah of the Levites. And as their assistant, Hanan, son of Zakur, son of Mataniah, for they were considered faithful. And their duty was to distribute to their associates. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and do not wipe out my good deeds that I have done for the house of God and for his service. In those days, I saw in Judah people treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in heaps of grain and loading them on donkeys, and also wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them at that time against selling food. Tyrians also, who lived in the city, brought in fish and all kinds of merchandise and sold them on the Sabbath to the people of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I remonstrated with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Did not your ancestors act in this way? And did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on the city? Yet you bring more wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. When it began to be dark at the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I commanded that the doors should be shut and gave orders that they should not be opened until after the Sabbath. And I set some of my servants over the gates to prevent any burden from being brought in on the Sabbath day. Then the merchants and sellers of all kinds of merchandise spent the night outside Jerusalem once or twice. But I warned them and said to them, why do you spend the night in front of the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time, they did not come on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should purify themselves and come and guard the gates to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember this also in my favor, O oh my God, and spare me according to the greatness of your steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is a song of Hosea, together. Come, let us return to our God, who has torn us and will heal us. God has struck us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, revive us. On the third day, restore us, that in God's presence we may live. Let us humble ourselves. Let us strive to know the Lord, whose justice dawns like morning light. It's dawning as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like a shower, like spring rains that water the earth. A reading from the Revelation of John. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was snatched away and taken to God and to God's throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God 
so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. A war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of God's Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning is a song of our true nature. Together, Christ revealed our frailty and our falling, our trespasses and our humiliations. Christ also revealed his blessed power, his blessed wisdom and love. He protects us as tenderly and as sweetly when we are in greatest need. He raises us in spirit and turns everything to glory and to joy without ending. God is the ground and the substance, the very essence of nature. God is the true father and mother of natures. We are all bound to God by nature and we are all bound to God by grace. And this grace is for all the world because it is our precious mother Christ. For this fair nature was prepared by Christ for the honor and nobility of all and for the joy and bliss of salvation. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, and all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Drive far from your church, O God, every vain spirit of clerical ambition, that like your servant Ammonius, we may refuse to conflate ordination and leadership and may never confuse rank with holiness. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who alone is our great high priest. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Prayers this morning, especially for all those who are living with traumatic brain injuries and for those who care for them while they may have suffered a damage to their brains, Lord, we know that their soul remains undamaged. And we ask that you give them a sense of your presence with them, that you give them your grace and your mercy and your love. Amen. Pray for all those who are struggling with conflict in their lives and in their work. And pray that they might find respite and recovery and grace in the spirit of Christ. And pray for everywhere there is war, broken by terror, hurt, harm of body, soul, or mind. We pray in the wake of the election day experiences around this country that the victors may find magnanimity and grace in their achieving office that those who have lost their elections may find grace and opportunities to learn and grow. And for all those who have worked so hard for the things they have great passion about, may they find consolation and peace and a path forward. We pray for Doreen and all those who are recovering from health crises. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Armadale, the Anglican Church of Australia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry of the retired clergy convocation chaplains. For the poor. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for Morning Prayer. We appreciate your presence. This is our quiet day here at St. Peter's. We'll have a short break. Take that, get another cup of coffee, have uh, Bible study. Then we have noonday prayers where we'll remember St. Ammonius slash Ammon again. Of course, then we have some other things to take care of in the afternoon, along with Alice's Cup and the Community Supper, possible pastoral calls, then 5 p.m. evening prayer. I have a 515 meeting with the Refugee Task Force and then a 6 p.m. home board meeting and a pastoral care meeting at seven. So I'll be busy, but you'll be resting. How's that? Sound good? All right, everybody, take care. God bless. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We'll see you sometime today. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.